Hello everyone, uh, my name is Bhavesh and today I have a very special guest with me. Uh, I have with me Omar who leads the Gemma initiative in Google. Uh, so welcome to India Omar. Thank you so much. Very happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, today we'll kind of discuss about a lot of questions that a lot of developers have regarding Gemma, the outlook of how Gemma wants to kind of scale as well. So I'll let first Omar give some introduction about what Gemma is. Yeah, thank you so much. So Gemma is a family of lightweight, state-of-the-art open models. Being open means that you can go, you can download the model, run them in your own computer, your own phone, your own devices, or you can host in your own servers. Uh, for Gemma, what we want to do is really empower the ecosystem to build on top of it. So we make sure that it's well integrated into the popular open source tools, that there, is a, there are good educational materials to enable them to learn how to fine tune Gemma for their own use cases, uh, for their own languages, for their own, uh, for their own needs. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for the amazing interaction. Uh, one question that I have right now, given that you've given this background, uh, given that you look at so many applications that are being built on top of Gemma, is there one project that has kind of really excited you when you've seen that project that this is something that you've not really expected out of Gemma, but someone's kind of created a solution around this, like any one project or any any version of Gemma that has kind of really uh, appealed you extremely to that point that this is something that you'd not thought of as well? Yeah, maybe I, I would like to share two different ones. Yeah. So the first one is a broader pattern, which is multilinguality, right? So Gemma is a model that already has a strong multilingual capabilities, but we have seen communities in different countries, such as in India, that are uh, pushing forward the capabilities of Gemma for their own local languages, right? So uh, Gemma 3, which is the latest Gemma model that we released a couple of uh, months ago, it supports over 140 languages, and out of those, there are over 10 uh, languages from India. But even then, we have seen community groups, research labs such as Sarbam, uh, that have pushed forward even further the, ca the capabilities of Gemma for local languages, right? So just a couple of weeks ago, they released a, a translation model based on Gemma 3, uh, which was quite exciting to see. So I wouldn't say it's something fully unexpected, but yeah. it's very exciting to see what the community can do, giving a strong, powerful model that can work as a foundation for their own research. And then we have also been seeing people using Gemma for robotic use cases, right? So Gemma has very strong uh, vision capabilities and with a bit of additional fine tuning, you can make Gemma a strong model for your own uh, robotic uh, applications. Got it. Uh, I think just to add on to that, I think uh, the translate model that you're referring to, uh, this is something that I recently tried out as well and I had some exceptional results mm -hmm. for a lot of translate use cases that I was trying to solve for. So yeah, I mean, Gemma in itself with all the modifications that are happening is something that is kind of enabling a lot of developers to create some amazing applications. Mm -hmm. uh, one question that I have specific to Gemma 3N, uh, the model that has multilingual and uh, multimodal capabilities, which kind of support text, audio, video, etc. How is the architecture different from the normal Gemma model? Like what are the tweaks that you've done to kind of have Gemma 3N different from Gemma 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great question. So to share a bit more context, uh, we released the first Gemma model uh, about one year uh, ago, uh, a bit further. Uh, so there was Gemma 1, then we released Gemma 2 in the summer of last year, so uh, around the July of last year. And then we released Gemma 3 in March of this year. And a couple of weeks ago, uh, end of June, we announced a full release of Gemma 3N. So 3N is a model with a strong focus on on device. So strong focus for very uh, compute limited devices. So really being able to run uh, the model in a phone uh, or even in a Raspberry Pi or in this kind of IoT applications. Uh, the capabilities uh, are very similar in the sense that it's a multimodal model for text and vision, but as you said, it also supports audio understanding. Yes. Uh, and everything around the design of this model has been with a strong focus on on device, right? So, for example, for vision, we have a new uh, vision encoder called MobileNet. So, if you don't know MobileNet, MobileNet is one of the most famous architectures for vision applications uh, uh, for for phone for mobile use cases. And we just announced as part of the Gemma 3 and released the MobileNet B5, which is the next version of MobileNet. Nice. Uh, and many of the architectural decisions here were based on how to make the model very fast for 
on device use cases. It's very similar with audio. So we have something called the universal uh, audio uh, encoder. Uh, and it's a strong multilingual, extremely fast uh, model that is so fast in Pixel phones, for example, that you can do streaming. That means that as, uh, as the model is generating, it can, uh, as you are speaking with the model, it can generate the audio very quickly, which is quite exciting to see. And then the third part is in the core uh, language model, right? And there we did a bunch of different things. Uh, the first exciting one, which is actually research from uh, Google India, is something called Matformer. Uh, Matformer is a architecture that allows you to have elastic inference. So let's say that you have a model of 4 billion parameters in the device, but you don't want to use all of the 4 billion parameters. So you don't want it to consume so much GPU for certain use cases. So thanks to Elastic Inference, you can only uh, enable one or two billion parameters, right? So you give more control and more flexibility to the developer. And that's really the philosophy of Yaman, giving control and, and uh, flexibility to users to build applications in the way they want to do that. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for explaining the entire architecture really well. So I get a lot of questions from a lot of developers that if they have to choose between Gemma 3 and Gemma 3N, what are the use cases where Gemma 3N kind of uh, is a better choice of a model as compared to Gemma 3? If you could highlight some key differences between the two on what to use where, mm -hmm. that will help the end developers to create really scalable applications going forward. Of course, yeah, that's a great question. So Gemma 3 is designed to be the best open model that can run in a single consumer GPU. Uh, and that's why the model sizes go all the way up to 27 billion parameters, right? Uh, for Gemma 3N, we just have 2B and 4B, right? Uh, we don't offer a 27 billion uh, N model because a 27 billion model doesn't make sense in the context of running a model in a phone. Uh, so first of all, if you want the best capabilities, more reasoning, uh, more complex use cases, the Gemma 3 model will be the, the best model to use, right? But if you want to do audio, for example, Gemma 3N is a clear example. Then you may have the question of when do I use Gemma 3 uh, and 4B or Gemma 3 4B, right? Both are uh, somewhat same size. Yes. So if you want to deploy the model directly on a phone, Gemma 3N is the model for you. It's an extremely optimized model and it will give you much faster inference than the normal Gemma 3 model. Got it. Cool. I think this kind of answers a lot of questions that a lot of developers have. Uh, one final question. I think uh, Gemma has uh, evolved really well uh, in the last year or so. Uh, we've seen different variations of Gemma as well, like Pali Gemma, mm -hmm. Med Gemma that you talked about as well today. Is there one variation of Gemma that you've not seen so far, but you would love to see? Yeah, that's a, a fantastic question. And, and we call all of, all of these the Gemmaverse, right? So Gemmaverse is uh, this huge ecosystem of tools, models created by the ecosystem. So we, uh, Google has released a few thousand uh, Gemma models over the last year, right? Yeah. But the community has created over 80,000 Gemma models out there or Gemma based models out there, right? And in total, between these 80,000 models, there have been over 180 million downloads, right? And the growth is exceptional because yes. the 100 million uh, announcement was just a couple of months ago, right? So we have been growing over 60, 70%. So it's quite exciting. Uh, among those, we have different models. So some are more focused on certain uh, modalities, right? So Pali Gemma, as you were saying, is mostly for uh, additional vision capabilities or Code Gemma maybe for code generation. And MedGem is quite, ex quite exciting. We're seeing lots of excitement from the community, from partners, from, from users. Uh, and I think we will begin seeing more intersection of, uh, of our models or uh, models in general and other disciplines or other verticals, right? So for example, how is AI being applied for robotics, as I was sharing before, or how AI may be applied for finance, or how AI may be applied for biology research, or how AI may be applied for dolphin uh, research, right? Which is one of our models as well, dolphin Gemma. So I think one question then there is, which are the verticals that need the usage of AI the most, right? And I think one area where which we will be quite exciting to see is how the finance ecosystem uh, may use Gemma. Uh, for example, would there be interest in having a Gemma model that has been additionally trained for financial yeah. use cases, right? So for example, can it understand stocks? Can it understand maybe some time series related data? Or for example, the type of documents uh, that you may see in the finance uh, context will likely be very different than the average context, right? So maybe uh, 
you can improve the multimodal capabilities as well. So it's not just generating text, but it's also how well the model can understand images, right? Uh, so I think that will be quite exciting. And the nice thing of building in the open is that these models are out there. So there is nothing stopping you of experimenting, yes. seeing if you can fine tune Gemma with maybe the data of your own company, of your own community, or of your own use cases. And you don't, you don't need to share it necessarily, right? The philosophy, the culture is sharing in the open, but of course there are context in which you may not want to share the data, right? Maybe it's confidential uh, company data, and that's totally fine. Uh, we give the control for these companies to modify Yama for their own use cases. They can host in Google Cloud if they want, and they can then just use the model uh, locally or in their own uh, in their own context. Good. Thank you. Thank you for the amazing answer. Uh, is there anything else that you want to share about Gemma before we kind of wind up the entire interview? Yeah, I think uh, it's never been easier to get started building with AI in general, both using Gemini and Gemma. Uh, first of all, the models are so, so cap capable right now. Uh, it's not just generating text or generating summaries or understanding images, right? Just a couple of days ago for Gemini, we announced a advanced image segmentation. So now Gemini, you can ask it, for example, to segment an image based on whether the people are standing or not. And you can have more com like conversations around how you want to segment images, right? And there are so many extremely exciting things that you can do right now. So it's so easy to get started that my top recommendation for people is begin building, ship, share with the community, see what's the community reaction, and just build out there in the opens. Uh, we are in the boundaries of what can be done with AI. The coding capabilities are so strong. The vision capabilities are so good. With PO now generating uh, super high quality videos that can also generate uh, the audio and the, the voices is uh, it's quite an exciting moment. Yes, yes, absolutely. So I totally agree with Omar. So uh, thank you so much, Omar, for uh, giving so much insights around uh, Gemma models, generative AI in general, uh, and uh, also talking a lot about Gemma 3N Gemma models, Gemma 3 models, and uh, yeah, I mean, thank you so much for uh, doing this interview. Uh, it really means a lot to me, and I, I'm pretty sure the audience watching this would kind of benefit a lot from this entire discussion. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank Thanks. you.